Hey y'all, I wanted to share a Photoshop trick that I use for websites. Whenever we want to have a big header image like this one, where you still have a plenty of room on the photo to place like a block of text, like a description or something like that. The problem for a lot of us is we only have like a limited uh, number of photos to work with for our website for the time being. Um, like for this one, for example, she only had this photo that was cropped in pretty close to her body and there's just not a lot of space on either side to put text without it like ending up being on top of her dress so that it becomes hard to read. So I'm going to show you how to extend your photo in Photoshop so that you can use pretty much any photo as your um, big banner image. So what I did with this one is I took it from this original photo to something like this. So I expanded out the sides of the frame, then I used the clone stamp tool to kind of like cover up a lot of the blemishes to make it blend together a little bit more and look just a little bit more realistic. And what you can also do is add a color gradient and you can make this like really faded or you can make it really solid color but that way like it helps cover up a lot of these dark details so that once again you're making the text easier to read and i'm going to show you exactly how i did this but not on this particular photo just because it take it took a little bit longer with all the grass and the trees and stuff but it still took under 10 minutes, so don't worry. Once you get the hang of the process, you should be able to do this with most of your photos and kind of get creative and make it work. So let's um, work on just like a little bit easier of an example. So this is a vertical photo. Obviously this wouldn't work as a header image. So I'm going to expand it and make it work for that purpose. The first thing you're gonna do is select your background layer, which is just what comes up when you put your photo in Photoshop. You're going to right click on it and hit duplicate layer. So anytime you make a new change, you want to do it on a separate layer. That way it's really easy to undo things and make changes as you go. So let's rename this to wide crop because that's the first change that I'm going to make and you can just hit enter. So we're going to go find the crop tool on the left hand toolbar and click on that. I have it set to a 10 by 6 ratio, but you can make it whatever you want. I just think that's a pretty good ratio to work with for a header image. You also want to make sure that this content aware option is checked and that's going to come into play in just a second. So let's just tap on the photo. And that way we can drag it into the frame a little bit better. Then I'm going to drag this top left corner. I'm going to extend the photo on the left side. And maybe just like a little bit above her head there. And then let go. Now, when you hit enter, that's where this content aware option comes into play because Photoshop is going to take as much information as it can from the photo and try to guess what it needs to fill in the gaps with. And it usually does a pretty dang good job, but if there's anything that looks funky, don't worry about it because we will fix that in the next step. So as you can see, obviously this does not look very realistic, but it gives us something to work with. All right, the next step is you're gonna once again, right click on your topmost layer and duplicate it. We're going to make a new change with the clone stamp tool, not clone stamp. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. So over here again on the left toolbar, you're going to get the clone stamp. So the things that I'm going to work on on this image now are I'm going to take this white part of the curtain and just extend it out to cover up a lot of the details that are anywhere close to her body and the chair. I'm also noticing that it cloned her hair up here in the top right corner. So let's get rid of that first. With the clone stamp tool, you want to hit the alt key 
And that's where you can go in and tell Photoshop what you want to clone. So I'm going to left click on the image here while I'm hitting the Alt key. And now wherever I start painting, that's what's going to copy onto the picture. Boom. Okay, so let's do that again over here with the white part of the curtain. So I'm going to hit the Alt key, select a good chunk of this white curtain, and I'm going to start painting it. Just painting over the some of these details here. And you may have to keep going in and reselecting that part of the photo that you want to copy, and that's totally fine because you can see like it moves with you as you paint. So you'll have to keep reselecting it. And I don't need it to go very far over into the frame because I'm going to cover up the rest of it with um, a color gradient. But I just want to, you know, make it look like a natural transition. So now we've reached sort of like the bottom of the picture. So I'm going to grab this um, bottom of the curtain here with the Alt key. And I'm going to pull that over and just copy it like that. I'm going to grab this small section of the floor with the Alt key. And once again, just click and drag. I'm going to do it again until I'm happy with it. Okay, I think that gives us more than enough to work with. So let's move on to the next step. You're then going to go um, to the bottom of this right hand panel with this little half circle icon and it says create new fill or adjustment layer. So tap that then select the solid color option. So here in this pop up window, this is where you can pick the color that you want your gradient to be. And I'm going to go with like a dusty pink, but um, once you hit OK, you can always change that color whenever you want by just double clicking on the layer thumbnail here where that little color square is. But for right now, we want to make it a transition. We don't, we obviously don't want a solid block of color covering up the whole photo. So click on the little layer mask thumbnail, which is the, the white rectangle. Now we can adjust it with the gradient tool. So the gradient tool is right here on your toolbar. Now, the way this works is as long as you have all of these options up here going from black to white, which is usually what the default is, then you would just click and drag a line and we're going to go from right to left. And it creates a fade out into that color. So I'm going to undo that so that I can try it a bunch of different ways. So hit control Z on your keyboard to undo it. And let's go from all the way from the right of the frame, all the way to the left of the frame, and you'll see that it's going to be a slow fade out, right? Let's just go from like the middle right to the middle left, and you'll see that it's like a much slower transition. So there's like no pink over here, and then it quickly turns into a solid color. So just play with that however you want. I'm going to start on like her shoulder and then make it like a really pretty quick transition, maybe a little bit, um, shift it over a little bit. Yeah, I think that looks really nice. So now, as you can see, it fades really nicely into the photo. You can even just make this like a white um, gradient and it would just look pretty dang natural. And now you have all this space over here to put content blocks of whatever you want. You can put a newsletter block, you know, you can advertise something or you can just give a little biography about yourself, whatever you want. But this is awesome because now you can use this photo that was pretty limiting before in a lot of different ways on your website. So I hope that that's like really um, a really good tool for you to feel like you can customize your website a little bit more and also not have to spend more money on pictures or anything. I'm, I'm just going to show you one more example quickly um, that I came up with. So I'll show you what this photo looked like to start with. It was very cropped in close, right? Like not a lot to work with, but she has a graffiti background behind her. And once you extend out the frame, Photoshop did a pretty dang good job of, you know, making it look believable. And if you want to, you can sit here and, oops, 
You can sit here and cover up all of these lines, any of them that you're not happy with, by using that clone stamp tool. I just did like a very minimal job on it because I think no one knows what the what the um, graffiti wall was supposed to look like, so it's fine. And then since these black lines were pretty harsh before, I'll show you what it looked like before. Obviously, if you put text on top of that section of the photo, it would be pretty hard to read. So that's where this gradient plays in nicely. I just did a light gray, soft, faded gradient, not a solid color or anything, but it just softens up those lines and gives you more room to play around with content on top of the photo. So once again, I really hope that this is helpful. I know it's a little bit complicated, but once you realize that it's only a few steps, it's like, Psh, I got this. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and let me know if you have any questions or let me know what other tutorials you might like help with, whether it's Photoshop, Squarespace, whatever. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.